All right, well, welcome back. What we're going to do here is we're going to take some notes and go through a problem dealing with um, a one, all right, sample T test for our mean, okay, for our mean. And so what are we looking for when we're doing one sample T test? Well, just like when we did a T interval, um, you want to state the parameter, first the process of stating the parameter um, along with your um, level of uh, significance. You want to state then um, what is your test, the one sample t-test. You want to test your conditions. Is it random? Is it normal? Is it 10%? Remember that normal, when you talk about means, changes up a little bit, is that you need to look for is the population stated to be normal? You are then going to use the central limit theorem. So is your n value greater than or equal to 30? If you don't have any of these two, you go to the final one and say, all right, if you look at the sample distribution, or the population distribution, are there no strong skews or outliers? Okay, are there no strong skews or outliers in your uh, in your data? So from there, um, we can find out our test statistic. All right, our test statistic is T. Um, other ones we're using Z. Z is for proportions. Um, means, all right, are for T. Uh, we find our um, sample standard deviation. We have our T distribution. Remember our degrees of freedom. All right, degrees of freedom and that degrees of freedom if you don't recall is n minus one n minus one all right that equals the degrees of freedom um, we then can use uh, our calculators or we can use a table table b to figure out what that tail probability is for our p value and then from our final step is then we can conclude all right so this is our do all right this is our um, plan and this and we can conclude our final answer. All right, so let's, without further ado, let's just go through one problem and example this. So you can pause this and take some notes, and then let's go to this example problem. All right, what we have here is a level of dissolved oxygen in a stream or river is an important indicator of a water's ability to support aquatic life. That's good to know. A researcher measures a DO level um, at 30 random chosen locations along the stream. So our end value is 30. Well, that's cool just right where we need for the central limit theorem. All right, here are the results of the milligrams per liter. So we have our test statistic um, is going to equal 0.477. So that's our stat. Our standard deviation, all right, of our stat is going to be 0.939. Okay, so um, an average dissolved oxygen level below 5, all right, below 5 um, puts aquatic life at risk. Do they provide convincing evidence at um, the aquatic life is extreme as a risk? All right, so first thing is, what are we assuming to be true? Well, we're assuming that the stream um, is going to have a mean of 5, okay, 5 um, milligrams per liter. Okay, so we're going to just assume that is true. We do have evidence, all right, we do have evidence um, that actually this is going to be less than, all right, it is going to be actually less than um, point, or sorry, less than five milligrams per liter, and that's where we get from our stat right here, okay, so we do have that. We have a level of significance, we can go 0.05, all right, 0.05, and we're going to state our parameter, this is the true, all right, mean, um, DO level of the river, all right? So DO level, all right, of river, okay? So that's what we have. So we're trying to figure out what the true mean DO level of the river is, all right? Uh, dissolved oxygen level of the river or the stream, okay? Now, from here, we have all of our information. So we have our hypothesis, okay? We have our test stats. And we're going to set that out. So now what procedure we're using? Well, the procedure we're using is we're going to use a one sample because we have one sample, well, it's 30. All right, one sample T test for means, okay? Because we do not have um, the mean, or I can put this right here for our mean. Okay, so we're going to check our conditions. Do we have a random sample? Yes, we have a random sample of 30 locations, all right? Random sample of 30. Do we have independence? Do we have independence? Well, we do have independence. 30 is um, less than 10% of all locations on the stream, right? Um, all locations 
on stream. Okay, on the stream. And so that's definitely going to be okay. Um, and I'm just going to put stream right here. <clears throat> okay, and actually that's probably infinite. So, I mean, I'm sure this is an independent. Um, um, and then the three, finally, do we have, is this normal? Okay, is this normal? Well, since we have 30, 30 is greater than or equal to 30. So the central limit theorem, all right, central limit theorem states that, yes, this is normal. So that is good. So we have all the conditions for our one sample t-test for means. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go to the do part. And what do we got to do? Well, we got to find our test statistic. And so we're going to find our t-value because we're doing a t-test. All right, our t-test is going to say we're going to take our all right, sample mean minus our mean divided by, all right, whatever the standard deviation of our mean is. And so how do we go about doing this? Well, we're going to take our um, 4.77. We're going to subtract that from our 5. We're going to divide that by um, our standard deviation, 0.939, divided by the square root of 30. And that's going to give us our value there. All right, we can put this into our calculator. All right, so if you take that out real quick, you get 4.77. All right, minus 5. All right, divided by um, quantity 0.939 squared 30. And we have a value of approximately, all right, negative 1.34. Or one. Okay. And so what do we have here? Well, right there, we're going to have this. All right. We're going to have our degrees of freedom. Our degrees of freedom will be 29. Okay. And we're going to take this value right here, which is negative 1.341. And we're trying to find this area down here. So <clears throat> we can go to our table B. We can use um, TCF. And we're going to go from, I don't know, negative 100, come on, negative 1.341. And then we have our degrees of freedom, which is 29. And I found a value. So our test stat was this, t equaling negative 1.341. And our p-value, um, I found to be 0 0.0951. All right, 0 0.90591. Now, if you go to your calculator, if you go to your calculator, we can actually perform a similar test. All right, just like we did a test for Z portions. But you can go down here and see this is we can do a one sample um, T test. And I think we can. All right, there is. All right, so if we go up here. All right, there's an interval. Okay, we have that. Um, T interval, Z interval, we have all these intervals. Well, we're going to perform this, and we have Z tests and T tests. All right. Um, and then we have a two sample T test. Um, but we're going to go and we're going to perform a T test here. We're going to see if this works out right here. All right. And we're going to take, and we have our um, data. All right. And you're not going to do that. Actually, we're going to do our stats. Okay. And so we're going to take with our stats. So we have our null hypothesis, which is going to equal 5. We have our other stats right here, which we know are going to equal, all right, um, 4.77. All right. We're going to go over here and put our standard deviation of point, all right, 0.939. We have an n value of 30. And we're trying to figure out a value that is going to be less than that. So we're going to put in that one right there. All right. And then we're going to go down here. And we're going to calculate this. And we'll see what we got right there. So let's find out what we have. Well, <clears throat> how does this change or how is this similar to what we just found? All right. Taking this value and moving over here. Um, holy cow, what's going on here? All right. Oh, wow. Okay. All right. Let's right. get out of here. Okay. So let's figure all this stuff out. I'm sorry. 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 All right. <clears throat> so looking at our values, we can see that, yes, our T value is here. All right. We can see that I found our P value to be 0.95 and it rounds to 1. Um, 
We have our values and we have our means and we have our end values. So we find the standard deviation, or sorry, the degrees of freedom. And so what can we conclude? Well, since we have a level significance of 0 0.05, we found a p-value of being 0 0.0951. What do we have? Well, since, <coughs> all right, 0 0.0951 is greater than 0 0.05, we fail to reject all right the null hypothesis all right we do not have convincing evidence evidence that the d o all right what is it um level the O level of the stream is less than five. <clears throat> what is that? Not like milligrams per liter. Milligram per liter. All right, so we have that. So we do not have convincing evidence of that. All right, um, we have some evidence. All right, but it was not convincing evidence because of our test that we just found. Okay, so um, what do we have here? Well, going through the four-step process, we did a one-sample t-test for mean. <clears throat> we have a um, make sure you state your parameter, make sure you do your hypothesis, make sure you have your statistics level out. Sometimes, a lot of times, they give you that. Um, you have your level of significance. Um, you make sure you go through the checks of the condition and then write out what you found. You can use your calculator right here by using a t-test. And then once you get your t-test, your p-value, and your test statistic, you can then make a conclusion of whether to uh, reject or fail to direct your null. All right. So with that, I hope this helps you out, and good luck. God bless in the rest of your problems.